Hello, my beautiful friends. We are heading right into this Aquarius full moon on August 11th into the 12th. I'm feeling so tingly and curious and excited about this energy. Um, for me, these themes, these energetics, these poetic images are what drew me to this work in the first place. Anytime I get to work with Aquarian energy, I am happy because this is the energy that I learn some of the most from in this lifetime and helps me to balance and understand myself more deeply. And I think right now Aquarius is an important player because we are working with that Saturn transit moving through there. And that is a topic that is going to come up today during this full moon because this full moon is in conversation and very close to Saturn. But let me just give you a couple notes before we get into the, the depths of this, which is that this is going to be a full moon about letting go of the story we think should be happening and letting go of the timing that we think should be happening. You know, often we will have a version of the story and it may even start off as a fun thing or a vision board or a goal. Um, sometimes it'll start off as something that culture has given us as a blueprint for our lives, but we will start to hold really tightly on to some of these elements and these ingredients and these timings and these ways we think our body should be, we think our lifestyle should be, we think our value should be, right? And they can even kind of sneak in slowly and stealthily over time. And this full moon is going to help us release our grip, our tight grip and control, where we're trying to control ourselves into the formulation of that story. And this is why this just excites me so much. The other part of this full moon, not only is it a full moon of letting go, this is also about expanding our ability to perceive and welcoming in broader perspective. And so these two themes alone just make me so happy. And I just want to get right into the details here. So we are going to have three fixed signs lit up during this full moon. We got the sun over in Leo. It's opposing the moon over in Aquarius. And the moon and Saturn are nearly conjunct. They're just a few degrees apart. So right there, right, we have this moon Saturn conjunction during the full moon. And there's a big conversation going on here with this. Uh, Saturn in Aquarius, I just wanted to take a moment to check in with this energy because one of the cool things about Saturn is that it is a planet and an energy that we can see from the naked eye. And it's one of the last energies we can see with the naked eye just standing here on Earth. And therefore, it has this representational quality of being between what we can just see here now, this is what's happening, and what may come and all the possibilities ahead. And so Saturn is often, you know, associated with restriction, limitation, all of these things, hard lessons, harsh parenting, and I have a whole different uh, connection with this energy. I've done a chat about this if you're curious to hear my perspective on Saturn. But here, what Saturn is doing is helping us to expand our vision, helping us to get into that nice sweet spot in between, which is, yes, you can look at the elements. You might look at some of the limitations or hallmarks of your situation in life, as well as being able to see some of the ingredients that we may edit out of our field of vision, ways of telling our story. Um, Saturn here in Aquarius is about taking the middle path and also about being able to perceive in new ways. So this full moon is already going to be challenging us, challenging the way we are telling our story and challenging where we have just, we are just holding on so tight to how we think the story needs to play out. Now that takes care of two of our fixed signs, Leo and Aquarius lit, lit up here. Um, this full moon is also going to be squaring Uranus over in Taurus, our big player. I feel like Uranus has been touching on moons all year and having a lot of conversations there. So this is going to be continuing that tradition. But this square, right? Squares are about challenge. 
but not necessarily about the hard work, the irritation, the frustration, the stress of it all. But it's about looking at where we are holding tight to our own changing selves. It makes me think of a Fleet Foxes song called The Crack Up. There's a line in there that is the tighter the fist, the looser the sand. And I love that visualization. You know, we want to We want to hold on to the things that we have. We want to hold on to those resources that have gotten us through, but maybe they're changing and shifting. We want to hold on to the way we've looked in past years, and maybe that's changing and shifting. We want to hold on to a vision or a dream or an expectation that's changing and shifting. So we hold really tight, but you can imagine that sand. Yeah, it just starts, it's like pouring out of our hands. So this square is just helping us look at that. We are just gripping. You can just feel your body just like shutting down, trying to hold on to all the elements, trying to stay in control of all the elements of this universe, trying to stay in control of all the elements of the timing and the story and the experience. And that's all it's doing. This full moon is just helping us to observe and to see where we are just hitting our head against a wall, where we are telling a story about who we have to be and when we have to be that thing in order to have value and a place in this world. Now this this square and the sun moon opposition, the Saturn sun opposition, all of this is also like I said an invitation to relax and shift our perception. And I don't want to make this sound cheesy at all. I think there's like honestly an element of mechanics here. It makes me think about when you're doing art Um, of any kind. A big part of that is practicing how you see. Um, And obviously, everybody's going to have their own unique way of doing that and what they create in the world. But a lot of times with drawing, for example, you want to start seeing the shapes for what they truly are. Um, You want to start seeing like the, the actual colors and the actual way the light is bouncing off, you know, because our brain is very good at editing out all those details and just having us see the rectangle that is the table and not thinking about how the literal mechanics of seeing that time and space actually makes it a very different shape. And our brain is very good at, you know, editing out all that excess noise because it's a lot going on around us at all times. And then we just start to practice seeing the same lamp on the same table, the same things on our walk home. So this full moon is about letting in a little bit broader focus, kind of softening, softening our eyes literally and seeing with a little bit more softness, openness, curiosity, not needing to control what we're seeing or how we're seeing it, but just practicing our capacity for holding a broader perspective. And this is something that is hard to do if you're in fight, flight, fawn, freeze, right? Because that is when we home in. That is when our sight narrows because those are survival techniques. That's how our body is getting us through to the next thing. So it does require, you know, feeling like you are in an environment that can support you being open and curious, but it's something that we can practice. And this full moon is asking us to practice that. If we have a version of the story and we just keep going back and back and back time and again to, well, this is how it needs to be. We're never letting in all the other signs and signals all around us at any given time. And that can go from being, you know, very energetic signs and signals to even just real picking up the right book off the bookshelf, a book that we've been longing for that has just been sitting there this whole time. I think this full moon lighting up three fixed signs like this as well, Aquarius, Leo and Taurus. This is also going to be a look. And in general, this Leo season has been about this, a look at the things that we sustain for a long time. The things that we feel like we need to keep doing the story and the way that we tell it. And with this, this square off with Uranus here with the sun and the moon squaring off against Uranus here, there's a, there's a sense that we got to look around a little bit and notice what stories we want to keep sustaining. 
what versions of the way we think we need to be living life we can actually sustain over a long period of time. And to just all this full moon is really asking for, just entertain the possibility of softening your vision and saying you're allowed to to let go of that tight grip just a little bit. You're allowed to soften and just look at the colors and textures around you. Observe all of that and hold a greater capacity for expanding and widening our ability to see. So um, this just makes me happy. <laughs> um, and I think too, one final thing while I start to shuffle the cards, with all of this, right, we can start to think about like our career goals or our money goals or, you know, all the other stories of what we think we need to be. But this visionary story in essence, though, is still going to come back to our perception of allowing ourselves to be ourselves and really widening our perspective and our ability to see our spirits and allow them to open and be part of this. And a lot of the exploring and the and the expanding of perception is going to happen in that internal landscape. And two cards wanted to come out. Five of Cups and the Emperor. Very interesting combo. Um, such different energetic qualities going on here. You all know how I feel about the Five of Cups. If you've been here for a little while, this is one of my favorite energies. I think this is the stuff of life. The Five of Cups, it represents kind of like what I was saying about Saturn standing in the doorway between what we can see. Here's literally what is happening. Here are all the elements of why I'm tired, why I, you know, why I'm frustrated, my limitations, my circumstances, right? Which isn't to say those aren't legitimate and aren't real because they are for sure, right? But there's also this, and that's the spilled cups over here, right? There's also this field of all the other information that's also simultaneously existing at the same time. What Five of Cups invites us to do is to hold these two things at the same time, <laughs> which is a, it's a skill. Let's let's be real. It's a skill to be able to hold looking at your circumstances, looking at what you're frustrated about it, looking at where it might limit you, of course. And also holding that it's okay to have expanded vision and to see some other elements wanting to come in. And that's why I love Five of Cups. A lot of times this is associated with grieving of losing something. And that can be one way that we do this work of holding two things at once. I think a lot of us who have moved through grief in life, which is all of us, right, have experienced this, the, the duality of that and holding both the grief and the, the moments of like, aha and connection that happen within that. But this can also happen in the process of letting go of one chapter of our lives, letting go of a story that we've been writing, that vision board that we've been obsessing about. It can be letting go of the way that we've been trying to control ourselves and getting curious about who we are becoming. It is that sacred place in between these two worlds. These two worlds are actually one world. <laughs> They're actually all in the same field just the way that this character is. But we so often divide them up and resist holding them both at the same time. This full moon's gonna ask for that, but this is where we get some of our most inventive ideas, our most insightful aha connective moments, and where we are able to loosen that grip, where we are able to loosen that fist that's trying to, to grasp onto the sand and just allow the sand to sit there and the stuff of life to sit there with us. So. The message is very clear there, and that's why I love that card. But here's the other part of it, right? Okay, so we hold. We hold these two different things going on at the same time. And what does that activate? The emperor. And the emperor is, obviously, this is a, an energy that is connected to determination, focus, leadership, um, being kind of the progenitor of life itself. And 
while the emperor is going to be associated with taking action, I think also it's it's important to see here that he's sitting still in his seat. And he's holding, you know, these these kind of channeling emblems. And this is an energetic state, right? This is an energetic state of not needing to rush not needing to try to detail, control everything that's going on in our lives and the whole path forward, but instead getting into the energetics of centeredness. And there is, there is this kind of, with both of these figures, these are figures that are kind of standing still. They're taking a moment to just stand still. And that is allowing the movement of the universe to move through. And this is why I said that this full moon really just gets me excited. Um, the Aquarius is always going to ask us to expand our vision and to see a little bit differently and to not just take the mundane world as it gets edited into our brains just in the efficiency of our literal me mechanics of our brains and our eyes and our ears and all of that, but to expand that perception out a little bit. And I think that's something that we're all longing for and we're all craving to be able to see with that beautiful vision and being allowed, being allowed to see with that beautiful vision. So much of our culture and our inner critics and our inner judges say that this is pointless, this is selfish, this is destructive, that this doesn't get things done, that this isn't discipline, that it isn't all of those things. And that's a crucial misunderstanding of how we work with Saturn. And that's a crucial, you know, way that we've often punished ourselves by not letting ourselves be in that playful field of perspective shifting exploration. Um, and that's exactly what this full moon is all about. It allows life to start moving through us more efficiently than trying to grasp on with the day-to-day -day running around doing it all. And it does take some trust to sit still long enough to let that move through. And that's not to say that I'm asking everybody to sit still for the next months of their life. It's, it's really just about adopting the energetics of it for even a couple of minutes in the day and tapping into it that makes the difference allowing ourselves to hold both that here are the parameters of my life and there's also this other world communicating and these two things are working together all the time it's just our ability to allow ourselves to hold that that is what allows us to actually move through the world and do stuff in that same exact day, in fact. So these things are not divided. They are not as divisive as they may sometimes appear. They are not in a war the way sometimes it's like sit back and rest and just watch or just make things happen. They work together. And I think this full moon really, really illustrates that. So I hope I hope this all made sense. Um, I just get really excited about this full moon and uh, what it's bringing. Uh, I will be doing a really specific activation for this full moon over on Patreon. That's where I really dive even deeper into this and offer resources and worksheets and discussions. It's a really wonderful community. So grateful to the people that are there with me. It is such a gift <laughs> such a gift i'm also so grateful for you here so if you would like to stick around i'd really love to see you i'm so looking forward to what we have coming up in the coming months we're going to be doing some really deep diving and some really deep exploration and i'm very excited to talk about how to get into some of these energetics and how to embody them and to feel them moving through the body and to feel them moving through our spirit and to feel that openness. And that is where this whole journey is going to be taking us. So I would really love to see you here as well as on my Instagram. And there's only one true Sarah Verba. So as always, look out for dupes and just follow the handle that I leave here and in the description box. I will see you all for our next chat. Have a beautiful full moon in Aquarius. Bye.